Hi, this is Jonathan with Echo Church. Thank you for joining us. Last week, I touched on the topic of prayer. Specifically, I said, when you look at the New Testament, that I do not see many examples of uh, Jesus or God commanding us to pray for healing. If anything, Jesus tells us, commands us to go out and heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out demons. In the same way, uh, in, in the examples of the book of Acts, disciples and apostles, uh, they did not go out to just pray for healing, but they went out actually healing people thereby uh, getting people's attention to the message of the gospel. My uh, argument uh, is that uh, I believe that we should pray for uh, healing. We should uh, entreat God. We ask God to move and because every healing, all the powerful works, miracles, they are done by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is God who performs miracles. We don't. We don't have the power to heal. God does. Jesus in us, the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, he has the power to heal. And it is he who chooses to heal people. We're simply the conduit, uh, the uh, instrument and the vessel of the power of the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge that. But at the same time, uh, from the examples of the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, it seems that uh, we are to participate in that healing process and uh, we are to declare that a healing power of God be released uh, in the person that we're trying to see uh, healed. Now, having said that, uh, today I would like to focus on uh, prayer. And jumping to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 21, Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. In Mark 11, it says, my house shall be called, Jesus says, called a house of prayer for all the nations. Prayer is critically important for the church, especially today, as the people who are trying to enter into the uh, promised land or the people of the promised land, prayer, corporate prayer and individual prayer is paramountly important. And that should be part of who we are and what we practice as a habit. Jesus said his house, in other words, the church, the assembly of believers in Jesus Christ, my house, his house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. It is available to anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, and it is for all the nations, all the peoples. If we do not pray, who else can pray to God, knowing uh, who God is? We have the privilege and the responsibility of prayer. And prayer is uh, not only a conversation with a God, that's fellowship, that's communion. It is also a way of fighting, uh, fighting for righteousness, fighting for truth, fighting with love, and fighting for other, other people. And so today I would like to uh, uh, look at quickly um, James chapter 5 and uh, 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 First Peter uh, chapter 2. Now, First Peter, uh, excuse me, First Timothy chapter 2, it says, uh, first of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving, and those four things, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving, be made for all people. So that is part of our mission, is to be praying for uh, all the people. Now, James 5 is more specifically to uh, pray for each other. So that's within the church. And they, especially if someone is sick, physically sick, that uh, we're to ask the elders to pray over 
that person. Now, the interesting thing is right here in uh, uh, First Timothy, as well as James chapter 5, the sense is that in prayer, there is an identifying, uh, identifying with a person and the situation that uh, you're praying for. In other words, there is love there that you care for this person that you are praying for. You are identifying with that person in that situation, that you are feeling their uh, uh, sorrow or the pains or anguish uh, or um, uh, fear or whatever that they may be feeling that you are praying for uh, them about, uh, that you are identifying with them walking with them instead of just praying for someone out there that you don't care or that you have no sense of connection your your prayer just brings much much closer to that person another thing about prayer that is very effective is that in praying that, that you are trusting god that you are drawing near to god that Actually, prayer is an expression of your love for God. And, and the more you pray, uh, the more you are expressing your trust and your faith and your love for God. And lastly, a prayer, particularly an effective prayer, is very confident. Confidence of a child approaching uh, their parents it's a confidence that God is here with us to hear our voices, our petitions, our cries, and that he will respond, that he will answer. When these three um, elements are present, our prayers become absolutely powerful, powerful weapon uh, in the spiritual realm, a powerful tools to to see things change in the physical realm, identifying with the situation and the person. And it is drawing closer to God and confidence, childlike confidence in his response. I'm extremely pleased and proud of our church. Uh, last week, we gathered together on Zoom to pray for a member of the church. And there was that, uh, these three elements that I saw, the uh, people who are praying were identifying with this individual for, for, uh, for whom we're praying. And we saw the closeness of their hearts to God and that they're allowing God's love to permeate their prayer. And there is also a sense of confidence that God is uh, with us to listen to our prayers. My prayer and my hope is that we and the, the church, everyone, every believer in this nation and around a globe will be a prayer warrior, that every church becomes a house of prayer for all the nations. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and uh, uh, privilege and the responsibility of prayer. I ask that uh, this season uh, that you will teach us to pray as disciples uh, asked Jesus to pray, uh, how to pray, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us and see you next week.